Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I'm a blogger and part-time reseller on the Poshmark app based in Canada. If you'd like to follow me on Poshmark or Instagram, you can find me at AshleyDTL. It's kind of hard for me to believe that it's already been a month since my last what sold video because the month of March felt like it had 900 days and it's definitely not the month that we expected. March brought a lot of change and uncertainty to many of us and we're all just trying to navigate this new normal. I feel very lucky that I was able to continue with my Poshmark business on the side while navigating working from home in my full-time job. And I hope to continue selling on Poshmark over the next few months as we continue to navigate these changes and continue to make videos and content for you. I feel like that was heavy, but it's just reality right now. <laughs> Let me know how you're doing in the comments or just like, let's hug each other in the comments virtually while maintaining social distancing. I had fewer sales in March than I did in January and February, which is interesting because after January, I was so pumped. It was my biggest month ever. And then February, things slowed down a little bit because there was a lot going on and I didn't source and list as much. And I was like, cool, March is gonna be different. Not what I expected. I did manage to sell 20 items in March, which isn't huge, but it's still something and I will take it. So here's what sold in March. Spoiler alert, I sold a lot of jeans, which is funny because everyone's been talking about wearing leggings. First item that sold were a pair of Fidelity jeans. They were the mid-rise skinny jeans. They sold on an offer to Liker for $25. And they'd been sitting in my closet for a couple of months, so I was happy to see them go. Something that I missed in my February video was another pair of Fidelity jeans that sold, and those were the only two pairs of Fidelity jeans that I had in my closet. I don't think I would pick up that brand again unless the style was really compelling and I got them for a great price. Next up was a bundle. This was a super random bundle that sold for $50. Many of the items in the bundle had been sitting for more than 100 days in my closet and a bunch of the items actually belonged to me. There was a Topshop metallic pink skirt in the bundle. There was a Just Cavalli button down cardigan with ruffles. There was uh, Nike fundamental training gloves, like gloves that you would wear for weightlifting and a pair of pink stronger everyday low rise workout pants. Those pants had been sitting in my closet. I think they were probably one of the very first things that I listed. They've been in my closet for 187 days and finally they had a new home. So that bundle sold for $50, at definitely a great deal for the buyer. And I was happy to see those items go and make a great bundle sale. Next item was a Topshop animal print tunic. It had a cute little mock neck. It was sleeveless, not gonna lie. I was kind of sad to see this go because I had sort of been interchanging it in my personal closet for a little while. This sold for $15 on an offer from the buyer. I have enough animal print in my closet. I maybe feel differently about animal print these days thanks to Tiger King. Let me know if you've watched Tiger King. Oh my God. Who am I kidding? I'm not gonna change. I have so much animal print, but maybe I don't need any more probably good for that shirt too. I've gone to a new buyer. Next up was a pair of rag and bone distressed skinny jeans in a size 27. Those sold on an offer from the buyer for $40. Those were a great sale. Rag and bone have consistently sold in my closet fairly quickly. So definitely love being able to pick those up. Next up was a Rocksteady Diva red retro wiggle dress. Oh my gosh, so many words. It was a really cute retro dress with a very fitted silhouette. Love that dress. It's all for $39 on an offer to Liker. I love having dresses in my closet and this one was super cute. Really happy with that sale. Next up, another pair of rag and bone jeans. These were the 10 inch skinny jeans in a size 24. So they were a smaller size, but they still sold very quickly. They sold in four days, four days. Um, so yeah, these sold on an offer from the buyer for $30. And even though they were smaller size, they still sold really quickly. Another pair of jeans that sold in four days. These were the Citizen of Humanity Ariel jeans. Um, they were a mid-rise skinny jean. I wasn't sure how they would do because I wasn't familiar with that style, but as I said, they also sold in four days. Those sold for $30 on an offer from the buyer. Another pair of jeans off to a great home. Next two sales, also two more pairs of jeans to two different buyers. Uh, the first was the Paige Hoxton Ultra Skinny Jeans in a size 31, offer from the buyer for $40. Those have been sitting in my closet for a little bit longer, but it gotten a lot of attention. So I was definitely happy with that $40 offer. 
And the next pair of jeans that sold were the Rag & Bone Stiletto Bootcut Jeans in a size 28. These sold on an offer to Laker for $35. Um, and those, again, only sat in my closet for about a week and a half. I wasn't totally sold on the bootcut style, but I figured because they're Rag & Bone, they might do okay, and they did. So, I don't know, Rag & Bone jeans in Canada do very well for me. Let me know in the comments below if you've had the same experience or if they've sat a little bit more for you. But as you can see from my sales this month and previous months, Rag & Bone jeans do well. Next up was a Lululemon piece. It was the Lululemon Transparency jacket in a green color that sold for $32. The buyer and I went back and forth a little bit on the pricing. We landed at $32 that I've been sitting in my closet for a couple of months, but I think it's more of a seasonal item. I can see someone wanting to wear that jacket in the spring. Maybe they would use it for running or walking outside. It was a really cute jacket. The next item that sold were my biggest sale of the month. These were the Tory Burch wedges. They were a snake print cork wedge in a size nine. They were a very cute item. I paid up for them, but I had a good feeling that they were going to do well in my closet because they're a really cute shoe. And again, I think once it's getting a little bit warmer, people were thinking about wearing wedges. These sold for $75 on an offer from the buyer and they just sat in my closet for about a month. So really happy with that sale. And it was nice to have um, a $75 sale on that item. I do like selling shoes. I don't have a ton of them in my closet. I think my only challenge comes from shipping shoes. I want to make sure that the shoes are safe, that they don't get damaged, that they don't, you know, bonk together. Um, so usually when I ship shoes, I put them in a box with lots of padding. I like to wrap each individual shoe so that they are safe and then like add padding in there as well. I try and recycle packing materials I get from other packages and hold on to them. And so then when I have to ship something weirdly shaped out like shoes, I have lots of filler that I can put in the box with them. I've only ever had one mystery bundle in my closet and I sold it this month. It was a mystery bundle of workout clothes. These were a bunch of items from my personal closet that I just didn't wear anymore. And I had listed a couple of them early on in my Poshmark selling days and they didn't get much attention. So I just threw them into a mystery bundle. Someone sent me an offer for $30 and I was like, cool, this is great. And I hope that they enjoy things that were in the bundle. Next up was a pair of Free People jeans that had been sitting in my closet for quite a while. I feel like when I started reselling, everyone was like, Free People, Free People, and I don't know, maybe just not Free People denim. Uh, these had been sitting in my closet for mm, 113 days, uh, and they finally sold on an offer to Liker for $20. And they had like patchwork knees, they were kind of cute. I don't know, I'm not sure about Free People denim. Maybe if it was a more trendy style, but these are gone now, and that's excellent. Next up, you guessed it, another pair of jeans. These were a pair of Seven for All Mankind Dojo jeans that had been sitting in my closet for a while, which I was sort of surprised at because I've sold a few pairs of Dojo Seven for All Mankind jeans and they all sold fairly quickly, but these ones sat for whatever reason. These ones sold on an offer to the buyer for $30 and yeah, I don't know. I feel like I had more certainty about Dojo jeans. Now I maybe don't feel as certain. Uh, we shall see if I get to pick them up in the future. Changing things up just a tiny bit. These were a pair of Free People denim shorts. I think I shared them in a haul video recently where I said I was adding some shorts into my closet. I got an offer from the buyer for $15 and I was happy with that sale. They were a really cute pair of shorts. Next up was another Lululemon piece. This was a pair of Lululemon crop pants. They were the cool to street crop in blue denim size eight. Um, I actually sold these on closet clear out for $28. I've talked before about the fact that I have mixed feelings about closet clear and it doesn't always work for me. The buyer and I had been going back and forth on the price for these and I knew it was closet clear out day. I was able to change the price to $28, which meant she got them for $28, but also got discounted shipping, but I didn't have to pay for that discounted shipping. So closet clear out worked really well for me in this case. Doesn't always. Last but not least, my last sale of March was a pair of Current Elliott The Ankle Skinny Jeans in a size 29. These sold for $28 on an offer to Laker. I shared these in a recent haul as well, where I said that it was my first time picking up Current Elliott. The other pair of Current Elliott jeans I have in my closet right now, I don't think are getting as much attention, but I was happy to see these ones sell in less than a month. That's everything that sold in March. On average, my selling price was around $33 for each item, which I feel really great about. And it was nice to see a mix of older things and newer things get out of my closet and head on their way. One of the challenges that I'm running into in this new world is how to get new inventory. 
and being a reseller in Canada makes it a little bit more difficult because our options are slightly more limited. I'm gonna do a video in the future about sourcing online as a Canadian reseller and to share some of my experience. I'd love to hear in the comments how things are going for you when it comes to reselling on Poshmark during these uncertain times. Let me know how March was. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to give it a like on your way out as it really helps me out. I'm really thankful that I'm able to continue with my reselling side hustle during these difficult times and I look forward to creating more content and sharing my journey over the next few months. Stay safe, stay inside, and I hope you have an amazing day. Thanks so much for watching.